Welcome back, I hope, to SDVOE Presents Face-to-Face -face AV with Justin Kennington. That's me, your host, Justin Kennington. I say welcome back because we have a special part two uh, carried over from last week's interview with Stephen Haywood of PTZ Optics. Uh, last week he told us a little bit about internet broadcasting, how that inter industry and its technology has evolved, uh, and he shared some tips and tricks for how to make the best internet broadcast that we all can. Now we're going to dive in and see Steven's own studio. Uh, this is something he built in his basement, uh, but I have to say it's a lot cooler than most people's basement AV setup. Uh, so without further ado, let's cut to that part of the interview where Steven and me take a look at his studio. Um, why don't we dive into your studio a little bit? Um, you know, you, you talked about, uh, I forgot how you said it, but I've noticed as we were playing around a little bit before we started recording and, and some of the things we're going to see, I can see, oh, you talked about it's like riding a bicycle for you. You look like someone yeah. who has 14 years of experience built into this studio that you've now constructed. Now you've got all of your favorite buttons, you know, exactly where you want them. So when you need to call up a comment on the screen, it was like, boom, I know where that button is. Um, I think there's there's a really yep. cool like human experience element that's a big part of of this that's that leads to how you built the studio you built. So show us around if you can. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so when you say about that, just for the the premise of everybody, I do a retro video game show as well as uh, modern video game, home arcade. So you're going to see a little bit of that. Um, when I show this, so if you're wondering, it, nothing's turned on right now. But this is what you would see when you come down to my studio. Pardon my, <laughs> I gotta have my Christmas Star Wars uh, <laughs> down at the bottom. They guard the I'm studio. Gonna, I'm gonna guess that uh, the majority of our audience this... is comfortable with Star Wars figures. <laughs> so um, this is a camera that I have positioned back there in the arcade area where I can switch it around. But I have it shooting up here. That's why it's kind of wonky a little bit trying to shoot through stuff. Um, when we bought this house, this was a traditional bar that they used. Um, and when I saw it, I was like, wow, this, this is a, a broadcast table, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so I had a, a buddy of mine make the, the logo in the front with that illuminates, but I also have TVs, if you notice on the side. So if somebody's down here in the arcade and I'm doing a broadcast, they can watch and see whatever's going out to the internet. As I switch shots, it also switches on those TVs. Um, you'll also notice on the left side of your screen, I have monitors hanging. Those are my confidence monitors. Those are the monitors right out in front that I'm looking at next to my cameras that are all mounted to the ceiling. So all the cabling goes up and through the drop ceiling And that's where above. When, when, you, so, when I feel like you're looking back at me or the audience feels you're looking at them, those are the, those are the monitors you're looking at, right? Exactly. Exactly. I can kind of see them out of my peripheral vision. If I need to kind of just glance over at them to make a switch or something just to make sure I'm on the right shot. A lot of times I can feel around on the TriCaster. We'll get to that. Um, let me see if I can I can kind of move this around here. You can see there's I have uh, two monitors. It's hard to see the cabinet there. I'll get, I'll get another shot of that. Um, on this side, I have a, a fill light, which you won't normally see if I don't show it on this shot. This basically just lights me up to get rid of the shadow of, of anything. Like I have my HVAC system here, which they built in um, it's all covered and, and whatnot I have acoustic foam because I'm kind of like in a cave mm -hmm. area it's higher mm -hmm. here than it is my here. HVAC is right so there. with a lot of I'm that like stuff you. you you get a lot of noise <laughs> yeah so I put some acoustic foam there also helps if you are tall and you bump your head but uh, I have that kind of set up there and then I have studio lights out front we'll, we'll kind of get to that but you'll notice my background here you know, a lot of people ask, is that a green screen? No, that's that's actually uh -huh. a TV. And so, like, I can actually switch it to anything I want in real time. And um, I, I figure, you know, setting it up with a TV, it's cleaner. You don't have the artifacting. So I have that set up there. Isn't there an issue um, around, in, this around is kinda what shooting I, a camera at a TV? And, and if their frame rates don't match up exactly, you get, like, more effects and things? Is that... Is that something you had to solve or something that doesn't affect us at this level somehow? No, I, I haven't had that. This is a 4K TV. I got it for, you know, a couple hundred bucks. Well, you know, it's not like anything to yeah. ride home about, but it, it is 4K. The biggest thing, and, and, and I don't know if I'll be able to show it. I might be able to show it with the other camera. There's a trick to setting the TV up so you don't get any kind of glare off of it. As you can see, it looks just like 
a, a, a superimposed yeah. video, right? You're not getting any light reflection off of it. You're not getting anything. Um, there's tricks to it. And, and I can kind of show some of that here in, in just a few seconds. This is my, this is the console I work off of. So I run a TriCaster TC1 from New Tech. Um, I have a total of 16 inputs on this. I have eight here, and then I have the other eight up here on my stream deck. My stream deck is uh, an another control surface that you can run with, just like vMix. You can run it with any of the other software solutions. But I run a special program called Central Control, which allows me to control the TriCaster and vMix from the same controller right in front of me. So I can start the stream. I can... I could switch between live and reruns. I have reruns that run 24-7 for my Roku channel. I can hit this button, and I can pull up a lower third, mm -hmm. just like that, where on here it might be a little bit more difficult, or um, it might be a, 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 a critical graphic where it, you got to press four or five buttons to accomplish it. I've condensed it down to one button to just simply press it and, and, and pull it up. So... Um, I have about four mice sitting here that you can't really see, but so they control the <laughs> different computers we get to. I also have a preview. Yeah, you can there's the other ones way under here, but I'll, 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 I'll kind of show. This one here has a monitor that's connected to my PTZ Optics Super Joy. So any of the cameras that I okay. press a button, like if I want to readjust it, if I want to zoom in, I can preview it without messing up the TriCaster interface. And I'm pointing over yeah. here because that's where the monitor is for that and I'll, I'll get a better shot for you guys here in just a second um as you can see i even drilled holes through the table to bring the cabling up again i kept everything clean as much as possible there's 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 a hole right behind there you can see with the grommet protector keeping everything as clean as possible uh let me go to this camera shot so you can kind of see so this is kind of what i see sitting here in the cockpit i've got a macbook pro here this is the computer, as you can see, it's within arm's reach. I can do whatever I need to do, sometimes without even looking at the screen because it tabs. Anytime I pull up a web browser or something like that, showing a web browser that's on this machine, this machine's an old MacBook Air, but it brings up comments. Any kind of comments that I want to display on screen, I can look at it. Um, it's right, right in my peripheral vision. I can, I can uh, click on it and be like, oh, okay, I want to show this or I want to show that comment. And you'll notice I've also suspended the computers. They're they're on like these. Every monitor you're going to see next to me here is suspended. And the reason for that is, so if I'm typing on this, uh, you don't the microphone the doesn't pick it up because the microphone is connected to the desk. Um, you'll also notice I have foam underneath. I have acoustic foam underneath the TriCaster control surface. Again, for noise, for I could sit here and do this, and you're not getting it through the microphone. Um, Let's see if I can move this camera here so you guys can see it. On this side, we have the TriCasters interface. I have this on a, I think it's a 27-inch curve display. This this is basically how I run shows or even how I'm switching stuff now. And then if you look here, I have an iPad, which controls my audio mixer, which is all the way on the other side of the room, which I'll kind of get to that here in a little bit. Um, this allows me, it's color-coded for the channels that I'm using for that particular show. Again, streamlining it, my microphone, your audio, so I can just simply mute hey, you if I, if I needed to or mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> so this here is my call screening computer, uh, sort of like what you do with vMix Call. Somebody calls in, I can put it on here, and then I send them over to the other side of the room, which uh, I'm going to get to here. I'll, I'll see if I can pull this up. Um, let me go to this camera. Okay, pardon the <laughs> microphone boom arm. We'll get to that here. So when I when I do a call in, I, I have a call in system that's kind of like vMix call, but it takes twelve callers for video. It goes to a machine that's in the rack, um, but that's the monitor. So if I look off to my right, I can see that monitor, and I can see when the person calls in what channel. I can control their audio. It's all in that interface using a program called Live to Air. Um, it's it's great for broadcasters. Uh, so I have that there. Right above that, I have on the wall, I have my vMix machine. This does my reruns when I'm not live. It plays 24-7. And it also controls my vMix social, which you saw earlier when I do this. 
mm -hmm. you can see, see it pop up on the vMix machine, pops up in the program. So I have it set up to where I can use it with the TriCaster. I'm sending it from vMix to the TriCaster, and then it's going back as a composited shot to vMix. It also gives me, in, vMix is also, besides that, controlling the TV behind me. Uh, but it's also doing, as you can see here, I have a, a, a green room. If somebody calls in to my live show, you can see it. There's a, no pun intended, it is a green room. Um, I have, the people will show up on the bottom there. If they're waiting, just like a radio station, they can see the live video above or pre-recorded, hear it live. They can discuss amongst themselves and I can talk to them with a headset, uh, even if I'm live and not mess anything up. And the audience and will I think hear it. I think that was an Imperial Probe this is droid a shot. I saw to the left of that monitor. Oh, go ahead. Is that correct? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yep. So I have, I'm a big Star Wars fan, if you guys haven't figured that out by now. So you you have to have this in the studio. I have a shelf full of <laughs> a bunch of uh, Star Wars action figures. I actually have more behind the booth here. I'm a big Darth Vader fan, so I've got a lot okay. of Darth Vader stuff still in box behind there. And then up here, I just have uh, my camcorder, DSLR. Um that I use for shooting posts and, and whatnot. This is where all the magic happens. This is the brains of the operation. This is my rack. Um, usually my, my co-host would sit right here. I actually have a backdrop that's up on a shower curtain rod right there. Okay. Yeah. That I can literally pull down and it makes them look like they're in a different room. Um, again, doing that on the cheap. I have a PTZ optics camera right up above that gives you this shot. Mm -hmm. Um, but on but on this rack, uh, I have a Wirecast. <clears throat> I used to run Wirecast a lot, so I have a Wirecast Gearbox, which is another software solution. Right now, I'm running vMix on it. It's doing a lot of the, like I said, a lot of the processing and, and heavy lifting. I have a, back when I was using SDI, I'm doing everything NDI. Um, I have a, a, an AJA sure. SDI router control panel, so I could press any of those buttons and route video signal anywhere I want in the studio that I have connected with the SDI. The live to air system that we were just talking about is right there in the rack. That's that's the big machine there. The AGA right below that is the actual router. And then if you have all this gear, you got to have a patch bay switch so you can turn everything all on and turn it all off in one spot. And then I have rack fan there. I also have some, I have another set of rack fan behind it. So I'm blowing air in and blowing air out at the same time to keep airflow going over all these machines. And then there you can see the TriCaster, which is what I'm running now, the TC1 from New Tech. Uh, let me kind of back this out. Here you can kind of see across the front on the back side of this, um, the, the mounting that I have, they're all on these brackets. Everything's suspended off, off of here. You can see even over here, my, my monitors, nothing nothing is sitting on a desk even this stuff here you can see um the tv let's see if i can get a good shot of this if not i might have to go to another angle one of the things with the tv that you 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 have to do in fact let me go to let me go to the, the other shot here and see if i can't get you a better shot of the tv i don't know how far i can go over there so the TV is not sitting flat, as you can see, and I'm gonna, and it's actually turned sideways a bit. It looks like it's head on, but it's not. One of the big things with using a flat screen and, and where your lighting is, and I'll show you where my lighting is, is to tip the TV forward yeah. and kind of put it at an angle, Keep, and that will eliminate any kind of keep those reflections pointed away from the camera. You know, reflection from the lights. Yeah. Exactly. So I have two cameras out in front, so I have to make sure that um, neither of them are going to conflict with it. And you'll, you'll notice down here, I have another TriCaster control surface as well as an X keys control surface. Why? Sometimes for some shows, I will stand right back there, like I was talking about with an over-the-ear mic and put the guest up on the TV, and I can actually control the TriCaster from there using that program central control I was talking to you about earlier and not need to be sitting at the desk right right where I'm at over here. So I could literally get up, walk back here, and I could control anything 
mm -hmm. that I can control sitting down. Um, and you can see I have the acoustic foam all over the place there. And then right out here in front, this is the, I think this is oh, the hi. part that you guys, I'm going to do my best here because of that backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. You can see you're in the, in that center. I also have an audio meter. Like you were, you were before the, uh, before we started this, you were like, oh, let's check, make sure the audio is coming through. That's why I do that. Because sometimes what will happen is I'll come back, I'll have a macro set up. So it kills my audio when a commercial runs. And then I might've yeah. forgot to re-enable the audio and I start talking. That's a visual reference for me to see, hey, I've got audio. We're good. That means the audience can hear it. Um, my PTZ camera, you can see it's sitting right there. And then I've got the TriCaster preview program right next to that with a clock. Got to have a mm -hmm. clock when you're, when you're doing this. Then I have another camera, which is usually my guest uh, camera. If I put a different camera in preview, you can see I have a tally lights yeah. above all my cameras. That basically tells the person if it's green, that means your camera's coming next. If it's red, that means you're live. So I have them on every every camera. And then they also have a bigger 32-inch uh, um, preview program, the same thing that I'm getting. So if you happen to be looking at either camera, you get a, a preview program uh, there. And then over there, which we can kind of get into, is my minuscule setup. Uh, for um, live streaming <clears throat> for gameplay. And then I have, real quick, let me see if I can pull this up here. Let's see if this, I don't know if I have it set up. So you'll see there's a camera all the way on the right-hand side. This is one of my favorite cameras. This is uh, my auto tracker. So hang <laughs> on, check this. You can't escape the all-seeing eye. So, yeah. <laughs> so, that camera there is um, one that I do, like, if I'm doing demonstrations, and, and I also have my wireless mic on. That's one that um, well, it's another, I use It's another that. perfect example. So, I, I have another perfect example of that force multiplier for idea, right? You know, without, without that camera, you can't get up and move around yep. <laughs> unless you have a cameraman. Right. Exactly. And so uh, having Matt in here, I have another one that's across the studio in the arcade area um, that I use, you know, if I'm doing mm -hmm. a demonstration of an arcade cabinet or whatnot. One of the things that I was, when I started doing this and I started doing some online gameplay with my kids and, and wanted to stream it, I was like, okay, people are going to ask me how I'm doing this. And if I tell them I've got hundreds of thousands of dollars in equipment in here, they're like, yeah, right. We're not going to be able to do that. So I wanted to do something that was a little bit more budget friendly, mm -hmm. if you will. And where my audio mixer is at, you're going to see that here in just a second. So this here is um, where I, where I would sit over there um, across the studio. I have a microphone set up. All my audio, even where I'm at right now, your audio, my audio, it's all wired into that digital mixer. That's right in front. Uh, I have all my consoles over here, my Switch, my PS5, my Xbox. So if I'm you know, playing online, they're right there, um, and they're connected to a TV. I've got my Discord uh, monitor there. The speakers I've had forever because I do a lot with music. But I'm running OBS, which is a free solution. And uh, I use a, a stream deck, a real mini a stream deck that I use to, as you can see here, I'll switch from shot to shot. And it makes my life easier when I'm playing games. I can go to whatever. And then I just have, sometimes I have to trigger stuff within the YouTube channel um, for my, my personal brand. And then I've got the PTZ Optics camera there. And then I have one over there. So I can get two different angles if I need one. If not, um, you know, I, I have that at the ability and then i have my 4k tv up there where i play um you know i'll play Fortnite with my kids or i'll play other games that i have you know depending but the cool part is i have sure. all the consoles set up to a switch so whatever one i turn on is what shows up on the tv and then i got these real cheap i think i paid uh -huh. 30 bucks for these with the stand included these lights and they work phenomenal and you got they're dimmable so this bare bones setup minus the camera you could probably get that for for under 500 bucks literally like 
you could have that set up with a good microphone, a decent camera, and those lights in, in your setup with yeah. free software. Like yeah, OBS. I mean, that's encouraging. That's the way that people can can get into this and just start to learn uh, to use it. There's one one thing you touched on that, that caught my interest, and I, and I want to touch on it um, before we go. There's so much more we could talk about. Um, okay. And and you know what? Leave leave your comments and, and <laughs> no. questions, and and maybe we'll have Stephen back on to to answer them sometime. You said that you used to use SDI switching, uh, and these days you use NDI. Right here at SDVOE, we're all about AV over IP. That's our that's our world. So moving video over computer network is 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 what caught my attention. And and it occurred to me, wow, of course, if you started this in two thousand eight, you were using SDI, and that's interesting because. Here you're producing something whose purpose is to go out on an, on a computer network, and yet you were producing it with you know traditional matrix switch point to point you know baseband connectivity like SDI in that case. What happened in your view that that enabled you to transition well, from from SDI to in your case NDI? What what was it that that let you start producing in the way that you were broadcasting? Well, let's go back a little bit more. Okay. I didn't start with SDI. I was Fair enough. using sure. comp uh, composite video. <laughs> so we really talk archaic. And then we went to HDMI, and it was like, oh, this is great. Uh, well, actually, we went to component first. And then we went to HDMI, and then SDI. And the reason we went to SDI, and I did it in here, was for the distance. As you know, you, could, you can go the distance. But what opened the door was NDI, Network Device Interface, uh, the company New Tech. Uh, Andrew Cross, who used to be this, you know, the CEO over at New Tech, developed this NDI technology, and really opened up the door for broad internet broadcasters taking a normal Ethernet cable. You can run it to a camera now. It doesn't matter if it's 4K or not. You can get 4K across the network, whereas before you would have needed like four or eight mm -hmm. SDI cables per camera to get 4K across. So. That really opened up a world, and it allows you to send video just about anywhere. Like you said about the SDI switch. Like, I literally have to run SDI to different TVs, convert it to okay. HDMI, plug it in. Well, now I can just send it with, like, a smart TV. I can just send it with, like, AirPlay or something like that to a TV. Or if, you know, you, you have that ability, it's already wired up. I, I can bring video signals in. I can send video signals to OBS over at my desk or grab that video signal and send it over here just over the network. And that's uh it's yeah, a game you know changer. my world of of pro AV and thinking about wiring up conference rooms and airports and and houses of worship that way, you know, those are exactly the benefits. You know, I don't live inside a broadcast studio or yep. internet broadcast studio, so it's cool to think about just what a benefit it is there too. Yeah. That's next for me is to go full on Dante for audio it's it's a it's a huge expense but the 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 value i mean for what you're getting to to be completely yeah. audio independent if you will with with using uh, ip audio is just and, and the clarity so that's <laughs> hopefully in the next couple of years i can i can awesome. make that switch over i say the next couple of years because there would be a lot of work yeah. involved in switching me yeah, over and just the, that's the, for sure it's one thing to buy the equipment and, and even to plug it in it's the integration that, that needs to happen that I think is where the the know-how and the right. challenge and just the work comes in at some point you just have to put the effort yeah and people have to people that are watching this you have to realize too I do this for a living this is part of my job um, yeah I have my own brand on the side I do shows and whatnot but part of my my job is to know how this stuff works for people that are calling up the company that that need to inter interface our product with their product and they want to know if it's possible or is there any problem. So I'm not telling you to go out, you need to buy all this stuff. Um, but I will say this, that when my daughter had her sleepover a couple months ago, we had a girl that came in here and they wanted to do their own broadcast <laughs> and stream it out to Facebook to all their friends. I had her running the TriCaster wow. with my setup in 10 minutes. She was switching cameras. She was bringing in remote people. And for me, I mean, you guys might be sitting there going, wow, you know, you might, I, and I was there helping her. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I was like standing behind her in case she wasn't sure about something. But it really reinforced to me that, okay, I did set it up 
in a way that anybody could sit down with any kind of video know-how could sit down and actually run it. So to me, that was kind of a testament, like, wow, I really got this streamlined to a way that even somebody that's not in this world can understand yeah. how my work. Yeah, that's works. fantastic. And I, like I said, I, as somebody who's, who's been on the sidelines of this kind of production, you know, I have a team that runs it for me for some of our, our live shows and things. Um, but it's, 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 it's great to see Mm -hmm. how smooth your workflow is the way you just you know hit this hit that hit that and it's all it's all at your fingertips that's that's how it has to work for you to be able to do this as one person and to be able to host it at the same time right i i i'll be honest i think i think you're also pretty talented at it because just the cognitive load of trying to host a show have intelligent thoughts listen to a guest respond to them and think about you know pushing a button to bring some caller into the green room at the same time like wow um you need an awfully good workflow for that to happen yeah yeah and it, it comes from you know practice you know a lot of people they'll go in and they'll just do a broadcast and they'll just go they're like hey i got a broadcast tomorrow i haven't touched the stuff i haven't even turned on the system i don't even know how it works but i'll figure it out as i go you can't do that when I get a new piece of equipment, I sit here and practice okay. it the way somebody would practice yeah. a piano or, or a guitar. Like when I was learning the TriCaster, I sat down here and I talked to myself. I would sit here, and I'm going to use this as an example here. I'd sit here because I yeah. play the TriCaster yeah. like you play a piano. I feel around. I know where my buttons are, and I'll sit here and go. I, I would practice and be like, oh, so, uh, John, what do you think about this? I'd practice. I'd cut to John, and then I'd come back to me again, and I'd be like, oh, that's that's interesting. And I'd go, mm -hmm. oh, Jay, what do you think? And then you can see it says Channel 2, and I'd come back. And I would go through the different guests. I'd practice throwing up lower thirds, and I would do this for hours to fine-tune anything and everything. I'd run videos during that just yeah. to get that muscle memory to develop it. And so when I was ready for a show, I – nobody nobody saw any hiccups they just oh you upgraded to a different switching system we, we couldn't tell yeah that's that it, that's was great. what i was that was well what look was here's the stuff with. we didn't touch on and like i said leave a comment leave a question what kind of software do we use for this uh what happens when the feed leaves your studio how do i get it out to facebook and youtube and and linkedin and all those places at once um I, you know i'd love to hear more about that stuff what are some tips for even more tips i should say for people who want to get started you showed us the small small scale setup you've got you talked about audio quality and everything that's all great leave us your comments leave us your questions steven this was awesome this was in, so informative for me i don't know if anybody's going to like it except me i think they will but i had a great time so so thank you for showing it to me <laughs> um, tell us the name of your of your show so people who want to connect with you can go find it or find you somewhere else So pretty much anywhere on the internet, um, I'm the Tech Buzz. You can find me, uh, my my online stuff, the Tech Buzz Gaming. If you go to youtube.com slash the Tech Buzz, you can find videos that I have um, for that space, tutorials, things like that. Um, even broadcast stuff is on there. Um, so, yeah, if you awesome. Google that, you'll, well, find, you'll find it. Thanks so much for joining us. Let's do this again That's sometime. I, I need to get some more tips from you. I did not show my studio after you showed yours and gave that lecture on, on cable management. <sighs> There's work to be done. <laughs> um, but thanks again, and thank you for watching.